Hi, you're watching TechCrunch TV. My name is Colleen Taylor. Here with me in the studio is the founder and CE CEO of Scanadu, Walter DeBrower. Welcome, Dr. DeBrower. So, Welcome. Scanadu, we've written about Scanadu before, um, but just to get started, we have we have a device here I want to look at, but can you explain to me what it, what is Scanadu? So, uh, Scanadu is a, uh, a mobile health company, but uh, so, you know, we departed with the idea of the uh, uh, making the tricorder for the tricorder X Prize, and uh, basically, it's a combination of um, electrical and mechanical engineering of sensors and electrodes, which are in that piece, but also uh, mathematics, algorithmics, uh, and uh, molecular diagnostics, you know, and physics, because we need advanced optics like. Uh, Hyperspectrals or uh, you know or biospectrals, you know, to be able to uh, look beneath the skin, you know. So it's really about allowing people, it seems, to sort of monitor their own vital signs themselves. Yes, this is actually the first part of the uh, X Prize as it is uh, designed. That uh, you have to make a device that uh, monitors your vital signs. And the vital signs are, you know, depending on, on continent, but the five main vital signs are uh, pretty difficult, actually, to, uh, to do. That's uh, blood pressure, um, uh, SpO2, which is oximetry, uh, heart rate, uh, um, respiratory rates, and uh, ECG, you know, um <coughs> electrocardiography. Right. And so I guess what you're telling me is that this device here, you know, when it's you know, when I use it along with the Scanadu iPhone app, will allow me to monitor all, all five of those yes. things. How does that happen? Show me uh, how does how does that work? How can this possibly do all those things? Yeah, well, it's um, so when we started, our design criteria was that um, so in a in a Twitterized world, people only have ten seconds. So in 10 seconds, it has to produce all these readings so without latency. So that was a very, very hard thing to do. Um, and uh, the second uh, hardest, hardest thing was one spot on the body. So you see, you have to do it like this. So your thumb. So because you need this for SpO2, then the one spot on the body is the temple. So you do this for 10 seconds and you have all the readings. And they are stored in your iPhone and immediately you have the algorithm starting to, and if you do it like, for instance, like several times a day or once, once a day or once every two days, you have um, a time series of bio measurements. So you have personal analytics. You can, you, know, you can have a wave of your health with um, um, so compensations of over time where you can see like, hey, I slept here less, you look, my heart rate is going up. Every time I take this medicine, there's uh, something strange going on here because I can't sleep well and this is how my reading. And the idea would be that you have your own insights into this, you start to know yourself better. But also if you share it with somebody else, for instance, if I show you like my um, health feed, my health wave, perhaps you say like, hey, I have the same problem and you know what? Um, so, uh, I, if I do that, then that happens. Why don't you try that? So, I think peer, the peer-to-peer -peer medicine side or the, um, that part of, of, of uh, healthcare which you crowdsource can make us think of, you know, so things we cannot imagine now. Like, um, what was it, last week, the Reddit uh, uh, incident? So a boy takes the pregnancy test of his girlfriend and says like, hey, look, I'm pregnant. Well, it's an ECG hormone. And if you have that, you have a tumor. Ah. So he didn't know. And he probably, you know, if, I, if he had just told his, his uh, but he put it on Facebook, oh, sorry, on Reddit. So, and there immediately you got reactions like, hey, man, you know, go to the doctor, you probably, he was diagnosed with testicle cancer. Right. Uh, so, but on an early warning, so everything was okay. So the crowd, you know, we can, we can expect a lot of help from the crowd. 
So you're saying that's sort of the value in having these kind of vital signs because every you know year or however often that we go to the doctor and we get a checkup, the doctor does take these vital signs, but then I suppose they just keep them in my file and I hardly ever even see it myself. Yeah. The doctor sees also it. Also, you forget them. Right. <laughs> like, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, if somebody asks you a month later, like, uh, actually, what were your, uh, um, your blood readings? Uh, you don't know them anymore. Right. What was your blood pressure? Well, I think it was, but it was okay. Because we are like that, you know. Once we get a clean health bill, we forget everything, you know. Yep. And so what Scanadu is going to do, so you have this device, but then I understand you also have some other things, because you talk about this yes. pregnancy hormone thing. Yeah. W what other um, products are, are you all making here? Yeah, so, well, uh, so this is the, uh, the sensor uh, device. We put all the sensors in here. It is actually the main vehicle for uh, vital signs readings. But uh, so we also develop two molecular diagnostic devices, which are disposables. So uh, you use them once. And one is uh, based on saliva, and the other one is based on urine analysis. So the saliva one uh, detects uh, common uh, respiratory viruses. Uh, so it tells you, you know, should do you have influenza A, B? These are immunoassays. You know, they are FDA cleared, but nobody brought them together and put them under an iPhone and made them actually connect with sensors into a, a complete platform. The other one, the urine analysis, is, is a very interesting one because there is no health pregnancy test. So this is a test that not only checks your, to see if you're pregnant, but also checks for the complications of pregnancy. Like, um, or it checks for, uh, you know, uh, uh, liver failure or kidney failure or uh, uh, dehydration, uh, uh, gestational di diabetes. Uh, so it checks for all these things and preeclampsia. And it puts it all on a time wave also so that, for instance, all over your pregnancy you can see, you know, like I checked 20 times, so I'm, I'm pretty good on, you know, like, uh, you know, I have a clean, clean health bill before I go into, into labor. And how expensive are these things going to be? Uh, so, um, well, we are still actually uh, negotiating with some of the, the components, but this is going to cost around $150. We want to make it very, very cheap. And, of course, the disposables will, they are consumables. They will cost, you know, very, very little. Uh, but, um, <coughs> so that was one of the main challenges, you know, making things cheap because you say, like, make me a track order for $100,000 would have been a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and when you talk about these, especially these uh, disposables that allow you to sort of spit on it or urinate, and it tells you all of these things that, I mean, when I think of um, getting tested for strep, mm. I have to go to the doctor to do that. I never yeah. realize. I mean, so this isn't something that you legally or regulatory-wise have to go to the doctor. These can be over-the-counter devices. Why have they never been over-the-counter sort of things before? Why hasn't this caught on? And why do you think this will catch on here with Scanadu? Uh, so, well, uh, first of all, the, uh, these devices, uh, because they give medical readings, have to be FDA cleared. But um, the immunoassays uh, out of themselves are FDA cleared, but still, you know, you have to start a conversation with FDA to see, you know, like to stress test this because you don't want to give the consumer, you know, like bullshit readings, you right. know, like you want it to mean something. And in the end, you want the information to be actionable. And sometimes, you know, we don't know what actionable is because most of these results may be boring, mm -hmm. but the combination of this may, may, may give you something that you haven't thought about. And can you tell me about Scanadu as a company? How many people do you have? Um, you're here in, in the Bay Area now. Can you just give me sort of a status update on, on where Scanadu is? Yeah, so we have 20 people now. Uh, so uh, spread over uh, sensors, which are electrical and mechanical engineers, uh, physics, uh, who work on uh, optical things like uh, uh, spectroscopy and um, uh, uh, molecular diagnostics, who uh, work on uh, the wet stuff, you know, they are biochemists or biomedicals or, and, uh, or chemists, and uh, uh, then uh, data analytics, uh, so mathematicians, algorithmic people, uh, so who have to, 
you know, put it all together and also show it on a smartphone. You know, like how do you put all that data actionable in a small screen on, on you know, because this is what mobility wants. Right. You know, it wants a lot of complexity, but on a small screen and very easy. You know, like this oral, very inconsistent things that you have to bring together. And and you said an interesting thing a couple minutes ago about it having to be actionable yeah. at the end of it, um, because we can all have these things for our personal sort of diaries, you know, to check our progress. Yeah. But eventually, if something is bad, you're still going to have to go to the doctor. What do you expect, or what have you heard back from the medical community? I know sometimes, you know, the medical community hasn't been so thrilled about, you know, patients always looking up their symptoms on the internet, on WebMD, and, and what that has sort of done to, to patients and, and their behavior. How, how do you expect this to kind of impact that relationship? I think this is the, uh, the timing is right. The momentum is there also to be in a sort of a Goldilocks place uh, because, um, you know, actually I think all the doctors think the, same, think the same. They also want more information to the, to the patient and at the same time, you know, have the patient more uh, um, educated so that they don't have to change their language uh, every time uh, because when a patient goes out, he forgets everything, you know, like, so how do you get this patient more committed? I can't, you know, all the doctors think the same thing. And uh, so, um, because we are living in an age of data, we are no longer bodies, we are vehicles of data, you mm. know, like, uh, and uh, so uh, doctors are certainly, and, and especially if you are going, the, you know, to do the conversation also with FDA, uh, so I think then, uh, because we need the doctors in this, uh, you know, for this disruption, everyone has to work together, and it will be a disruption like, you know, Google is a great thing about information. Mm -hmm. It is now no longer, you know, in the possession of an elite. Well, I think the same disruption can benefit healthcare. Right. Mm -hmm. um, great. And here's my last question: When you talk about, you know, FDA things that you all are going to have to go through, I know we had reported a little while ago when there was, you know, a few million in funding that you had raised. Is is this something that you're going to have to raise some more serious funding? I know, you know, pharmaceutical companies when they go through FDA trials that can cost tens of millions of dollars. Yeah, for the moment we're, we're comfortable in uh, so the money that we have raised. Um, so, on you know for our um, the uh, bringing our products to manufacturing. So uh, and you know some of our our products are pretty simple. We think to go through FDA because we, but of course uh, you know it 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 of course costs money because you have to put the complete company in a quality control, design controls, ISO, FDA, you know, a lot, a lot of people have to help and we will all have to do four or five jobs because we cannot hire a hundred people. Right. You know, yeah. um, but great. it's good because, you know, like, we have attention deficit anyway, so five, five <laughs> jobs will do. <laughs> five jobs will do. You don't just have to focus <laughs> on the one. And so, um, Sounds great. I guess this is now my last question. What is your next focus here? What's the big thing leading into 2013 uh, for Scanadu? What's, you know, top priority? Uh, well, uh, so the manufacturing is always uh, an interesting journey. The uh, uh, stress testing all our readings, uh, you know, together with uh, regulatory authorities, the uh, 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 then you know the uh, the distribution, you know the uh, uh, the marketing, and but the biggest thing, I think, is how to get to know what the consumer or the patient is going to do with the data, because mostly when you bring an amount of data onto the crowd, they do something extraordinary with it, you know, like. So we could never have expected what YouTube or Google had done before they were there. Now we think it's normal, but it wasn't. Right. So it's just seeing what people do with this yeah. data once it's once they know about it. Um, Walter DeBrower, thank you for coming by and showing us uh, this version of Scanadu. And please keep in touch. Thank you. <laughs>